Forms play a vital role in any web application. Thus, having complete understanding of the forms is very much important while working with it. Our today's session is going to cover many different aspects related to form. Let's get started. This is our ASP.NET Core MEC application and I'll show you the user interface of this application. This is our application. If you look at the application, we have different tabs here, home, then privacy, contact us and tutorial. There is no way we can input some data to the application. Right now, our application is just displaying the static data. Now, why do we use forms? We use forms to collect information and they are used in variety of situations starting from login. To log in the user to the application, we use login forms. When in contact page, we use contact forms. We take the example of our own application. If we have to create some tutorial details, again, we have to create a form. In short, whenever we have to collect some information, we use forms. Now let's see how to use form in our application. Let's start with designing a form. Now we are going to design a form that will create new tutorial. In this project structure, views folder contains all the view files. That means UI files. If I expand, you can find different folders, home, shared and tutorial. Right now we have only one file that is index.cshtml. Let's see what is inside controllers folder. Here you can find two controllers. One is home controller and the other one is tutorial controller. Inside tutorial controller, we have only one action method that is index and, and this index action method is returning index view. And we have a controller wherein we are injecting the dependency. If you want to know dependency injection and how to set up entity framework core with repository pattern, I'll keep the playlist link in the description. Later you can have a look. To add a new view file, right click on tutorial folder, add, then you can click on new item, choose razor view empty and you can name it as create tutorial, add. Now we will remove all this code. If you expand www root folder, you can find the folder by name lib. If you expand this, you can find the folders bootstrap, jQuery and other stuff. This means bootstrap is already installed in our project. We can make use of boot we can make use of bootstrap to have to enhance the look and feel of our project. If you want to know more about bootstrap, then you can visit the site getbootstrap.com. Here you will find lots of examples. Here is a simple form. Form structure is very simple. Here we have used the form tag to create a form and here we have three sets of div. Inside each div we have two controls label and input and again here we have label and input element for description and inside this div we have a button whose type is submit. If you notice we have used form group control on div element. It's a bootstrap class and it is used to add some structure to a form. One more class that we have used on input element is form control. If we use this class on a if we use this class on input elements, then elements will have 100% width. One more important thing is submit button. Here if you notice we have mentioned type as submit. Submit button plays important role in form. When a user clicks on submit button, the form data will be submitted to the server. We are using this form to post the data to the server. Then having just the submit button is not enough. We should specify the HTTP method that is used to send the data to the server. To do that, we should use the method attribute of the form tag. And the method that we use to send the data to the server is HTTP POST method. Now slowly we are going to bring ASP.NET Core MVC features into this form. Now we are going to make this view strongly typed. To do that we are going to specify the model. Write at model. Write at model. Then specify the model. Next we are going to specify the details of the controller and the action method that are going to handle this form. To do that we make use of tag helpers. Just a quick note on tag helpers. 
tag helpers are used to help HTML tags work more efficiently, with which you can write regular HTML tags and mix server-side attributes. There are many things to know about tag helpers. I'll cover them in a separate session. But in today's session, what we are using are form tag helpers. Before using tag helpers, first we should make sure that tag helpers are available to use. Can you see view imports.cshtml file here? Open this file. This add tag helper directive adds tag helpers to our project. We have it in our project so we can use tag helpers. Bind the controller using ASP controller attribute. We have to specify the controller name. Controller name is tutorial. We can specify the action method name using ASP action attribute. I'll mention the action method name later. Now I want to bind this label and input to name attribute of tutorial model. To do that, we should make use of ASP for attribute and I can specify the attribute name. Here, name is the name of the attribute. Done. I'll copy this one and use it on the input tag as well. Done. Now we want to bind this to description attribute. Instead of, instead of name, we have to specify description. We are almost done with the view. Next, we are going to modify the controller to handle this form. Controller that handles this form is tutorial controller. Let's open that. Let's expand controllers folder. You can find tutorial controller here. Let's add new action method by name create tutorial. I'll copy this code and I'll change the name to create tutorial. I'll remove this code. We'll return the view. This will return create form. Now I'll run the application. I will click on tutorial. Right now there are no rows as we don't have data in database. Let's modify this form and create a link. I will open index view. I want to have that link at the top, so I'll add it here. We have used anchor tag. Here we have applied bootstrap classes to give a look of button. And these are the tag helpers. When we click on this link, create tutorial action method from tutorial controller will be called. Let's refresh and see. See, we have a button add new tutorial. When I click on this button, we get a form. I'm back at create tutorial view. Earlier, we did not mention action method name that is going to handle this form. For, I'll specify the action method name now. Create tutorial is the action method. Let's try to submit this form. Even if I click on submit, nothing is happening. See? New tutorial has not been created. The reason is we are posting form data using HTTP post method. If we don't specify anything, then by default action methods handle HTTP get request. To handle HTTP post request, then we have to create one more action method and with the same name and decorate it with HTTP post attribute. Now, this method will handle HTTP POST request and this action method will handle HTTP GET request. Let's modify this method to receive model data. If you are following the series, by now you know that you, we have set up Entity Framework Core in our project and we are using SQL Server as our database. This create tutorial action method should store new set of data as a new record in database. Re now we should verify which method will write data to the database. For your information, we, we have implemented repository pattern. Here inside repository folder, you can find iTutorial repository, which is the interface. And this tutorial repository is implementing this interface. Here you can see we have add. Right now we don't have implementation for this add method. I'll remove this line and write actual code. Code is very simple. We are making use of context object and we want to write data to the tutorial table. So context.tutorials entity framework core has method add which will add record to the database table 
and we are passing model data rest entity framework code will take care here we should call save changes method this method saves changes to the database then we are returning newly added data we should call this method from create tutorial action method again it's very simple here we have set up dependency injection we will make use of this tutorial repository and call add method we are calling add method and passing form data I will decorate this action method with HTTP get. Now, instead of returning view, I want to call this action method. Anyhow, this action method has a code to display all tutorials. So instead of return view, we can redirect to action. Here, we are redirecting to action index. Let's test our changes now. I'll click on add new tutorial. It should display. Now, when I click on submit, it should create new record in database working see we have added new record to the database and is and index view is retrieving that data from database and displaying here i hope you are clear with how to work with forms in asp.net core mez application thanks for your time see you soon in the next video thank you